So, we will come again in my course power electronics application in power systems. So, in the last lecture I introduced the concept of converter based compensators right. So, I, I discussed there are uh, uh, different types of com converter based compensators and uh, the constructional wise and also the uh, operational wise they are different than the conventional compensators I discuss such as SVC and TCSC. Okay. So, uh, in the last lecture I started discussion on the uh, shunt type of the uh, converter based compensator which is named as STATCOM that is static synchronous compensator. So, in this particular lecture I will continue the discussion on STATCOM. Uh, and I will discuss the various applications of STATCOM and also I will discuss uh, the control philosophy of the STATCOM and uh, since you have already uh, understood the basic concept of static fire compensator that is SVC. So, in my discussion I will discuss the difference between the STATCOM and SVC. One is a converter based compensator that is STATCOM and other is uh, this uh, impedance or admittance or susceptance based compensator that is SVC. Okay. So, let us start our discussion right now. So, we are discussing on static synchronous compensator. or STATCOM. Okay. And in this discussion I will discuss the applications of STATCOM. Okay. So, Similar to this SVC that is static parts compensator in STATCOM can be used in various applications of power system and STATCOM uh, can also be used to enhance the performance of the power systems. Now, how it is to be done let us discuss right now. So, similar to this SVC STATCOM can be used in power system. voltage control ok. Then uh, that com can also be used in steady state power transfer capacity enhancement power transfer capacity enhancement. Then the STATCOM can also be used in transient stability enhancement. and STATCOM can also be used in power system oscillation damping. Okay. Now, if you look at these four different applications, you know that uh, these four ap different applications of STATCOM uh, is quite similar to the applications of SVC, but however, there is a difference between the performance of uh, the uh, SVC and STATCOM. So, time to time I will discuss the comparison uh, between the performances of STATCOM and SVC. 
ok. So, let us start with this uh, uh, statcom in power system voltage control. Statcom in power system voltage control ok. Now, let us uh, draw the basic schematic or block diagram of this control scheme. Suppose, this is the bus at which uh, we will place this statcom and this is what the statcom block is. This is what the statcom block is. Okay. So, what it is actually done is this is a comparator here V reference uh, is fed that is the voltage reference and this is what the measured value of the voltage of the particular bus. Then whatever the error would be that will be fed to the controller ok. And then this controller will generate a reference current signal and it will uh, feed to the statcom. So, the controller will generate a I reference uh, from this different of this voltage error V error which is equal to V reference minus V m where V m is measured bus, bus voltage V reference is the reference voltage I reference is the reference current. And with this I reference signal, this statcom will decide how much current it will draw from the bus that is I statcom. If you remember my previous days lecture, I already discussed that statcom will be a model as a controllable current source. Okay. So, that is what the uh, model of statcom. So, unlike this SVC which is modeled as a uh, controllable susceptance. Okay. Now, how would be the block diagram of this uh, control diagram? This block diagram, so this is the basic schematic diagram, basic schematic diagram of the statcom. Similarly, from this we can find out the controller block. So, controller block or control block diagram of statcom, control block diagram of statcom. So, how it would be? So, we will be having a comparator over here, which is comparing this V reference, reference voltage with the measured voltage that is V m. Okay. And then the error would be fed to the controller, this controller transfer function is represented by let us say G 1. Then uh, there is another block which represents the transfer function of the transportation lag of the statcom. And then finally, it is providing this uh, desired voltage. Okay, to the bus and here at the in the feedback we will also have a feedback transfer function H. Okay. Now, here where or I should write this on the top where G 1 is representing 1 upon K 1 plus T 1 S that is transfer function transfer function of the controller. 
okay and this k is the uh, this control characteristic slope or slope of control characteristic and you know that uh, similar to this SBC, we will also maintain a very small amount of positive slope typically 1 to 5 percent in case of STATCOM also to facilitate this uh, parallel operation of the STATCOM or the reactive power compensation sharing among the multiple STATCOM and also uh, for various uh, you know uh, reasons which I already discussed in case of SBC. Okay. Now, T1 is here the time constant time constant of the controller. Now, typically the value of this time constant of the controller is 10 to 50 millisecond. Okay. Now, this G2 is basically representing that uh, transfer function of transportation lag which is represented by this, where it is representing transfer function due to transportation lag. Okay. So, you know that uh, this transportation lag is basically uh, the time required to reach the input to that particular device to get the proper output. Now, here T d is representing a transportation lag time. So, transportation lag time which is typically in a range of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 millisecond okay, for STATCOM and this transportation lag in case of STATCOM is much lower as compared to SVC okay, and that is why uh, this STATCOM uh, is much faster than SVC in operation okay, and that is one of the advantages of STATCOM in particular during the operation of dynamic condition. Okay. Now, this all about G 1 and G 2. So, we have another uh, you know uh, transfer function which represent capital H. So, capital H represents the transfer function for measuring device. measuring devices. So, it is typically represented at h equal to 1 upon 1 plus T 2 s, where T 2 is equal to this measuring circuit time constant. So, measuring circuit time constant and typical this value of this T 2 is equal to 8 to 16 millisecond. 8 to 16 millisecond. So, this is all about the control block diagram of the STATCOM. So, this is how the STATCOM can be used to control the voltage of a particular bus where the STATCOM can be placed. Now, this particular uh, or strategic location of STATCOM could be uh, the uh, midpoint of a transmission line or somewhere at any point of the transmission line. Okay. But, uh, wherever it can be placed, it can be used to uh, control or regulate the voltage of that particular point. Okay. This is what the similar task of STATCOM and this is what the main task of uh, STATCOM as sim, uh, similar to the SBC or static bar compensator. Okay. Now, next we will come to the uh, second application of STATCOM which is steady state power transfer capacity enhancement. So, so the steady state power transfer capacity enhancement using 
statcom so this is i'll discuss right now so to discuss uh, this this steady state uh, power transport capacity enhancement of statcom let us take a small uh, uh, transmission line model or short transmission line model and uh, let us derive the mathematical expression for the power flow through the transmission line uh, due to the presence of the statcom okay so let us consider a short transmission line model where we have statcom placed at the midpoint okay now uh, before we place the statcom let us assume that there is a step down transformer as we know that we all uh, we have uh, a step down a step down transformer for stepping down the voltage level from the system voltage level to much vo lower the voltage level to provide at the statcom okay so here our assumptions are we have a uh, short symmetrical three phase lossless transmission line okay now th let us consider the sending and voltage as v at an angle delta receiving and voltage is v at an angle zero and this is the midpoint where the statcom is placed okay and this is what the uh, step down transformer so if we consider line to be symmetrical so the voltage at the midpoint we know is equal to vm at an angle delta by 2 okay now suppose uh, this current drawn by this statcom is representing this i statcom okay and this step down transformer is representing is a uh, model to it is this uh, leakage reactance that is x sigma and this statcom is modeled with a controllable voltage source that is uh, representing vp at an angle delta by 2. So, here also we take the assumption that the statcom is also lossless. Okay. So, therefore, uh, it will there will be no real power exchange through the statcom. So, there is no real power exchange through the statcom okay now let us consider that uh, this uh, line reactance is represented by jx by 2 and jx by 2 so you know that uh, this here uh, v at an angle delta sending and voltage v at an angle 0 is receiving and voltage v m at an angle delta by 2 is midpoint voltage and this v p at an angle delta by 2 is equal to the statcom output voltage. Okay. and x sigma is basically representation of step down transformer reactance
or leakage reactance as you know and this x by 2 is representation of this line reactance. Okay. So, this is what we have. Now, we will develop the mathematical expressions for power flow through this uh, transmission line due to the presence of the statcom. So, that is what our goal. So, our goal is to develop the mathematical expression for the power flow through transmission line through that line uh, due to the statcom or uh, with statcom with statcom okay so, this is what our goal is. Now, in order to develop this uh, mathematical expression, let us apply KCL, KCL at midpoint. Okay. So, so the current flowing from the sending end, suppose the, if this arrow is representing this current flow from the sending end, this arrow is representing this current flow from the receiving end. So, these two current uh, if you sum up then resultant would be the current flowing through the statcom or current drawn by the statcom. So, what would be that? Let us see. So, current flowing from the sending end side would be V at an angle delta minus V m at an angle delta by 2 divided by J x by 2 and current flowing from the receiving end would be V at an angle 0 minus V m at an angle delta by 2 divided by J x by 2. This will be equal to the current drawn by the statcom. So, which is which will be equal to V m minus V p okay, at an angle delta by 2. Okay divided by j x sigma. Okay. So, that is what the KCL equation is. So, this uh, expression is representing the current flowing from the sending end side, this expression is representing current flowing from the receiving end side and this expression is representing the current drawn by the statcom. So, all these three currents are uh, used uh, in a KCL Kirchhoff current law to get this equation. Now, let us simplify this equation. So, to simplify this equation, what we will do? We have this V m at an angle delta common here as well as here. So, we will keep it and also here. Okay. So, we will keep it to the other side. So, what we will do is we will uh, keep this V at an angle delta plus V at an angle 0 divided by J x by 2 which is in the left hand side. So, therefore, this and this we will bring it to the other side or, or right hand side. So, this we can write it as two V m at an angle delta by 2 divided by J x by 2. Okay. So, this is what uh, we brought from the left hand side to the right hand side plus this will be as it is. So, V m at an angle delta by 2 divided by J x sigma minus V p at an angle delta by 2 divided by J x sigma. Okay. Now, let us keep this see since we have this j term all in the denominator. So, we can cancel this j term here, here, here as well as here. So, let us cancel this out. Okay. If we multiply j from the both right hand side and left hand side, so j will be omitted from the equation. So, then uh, what we will get? 
will get uh, right hand side uh, v at an angle delta plus v at an angle 0 divided by x by 2 and right hand side what we will get uh, is or let if we bring this v p again to the left hand side. So, then what we can write uh, v p at an angle delta by 2 divided by x sigma is equal to. So, left hand side uh, we will be having uh, this equations which are uh, not function of v m. Right hand side we will purposefully keep v m as a common. So, if we can write it v m as, as a common. So, this will be equal to or rather I will take v m at an angle delta by 2 as a common. So, what we will get? We will get uh, 4 by x plus 1 upon x sigma. Okay, right? So, this we will get. So, this is what the equation we get. So, we will continue to do uh, derive this expression. So, what we will do is let us consider that uh, this let us consider that this this 4 plus 4 divided by x plus 1 divided by x sigma let us consider some constant k. Okay. If we consider so then the our equation would be v at an angle delta plus v at an angle 0 divided by x by 2 I wrote this part as it is plus this v p at an angle delta by 2 p p at an angle delta by 2 divided by x sigma is equal to k v m at an angle delta by 2 okay higher k is uh, representing 4 divided by x plus 1 upon x sigma. Okay. Now, what we will do again if we consider so then I can write rewrite this equation as v m at an angle delta by 2 is equal to if we divide both right hand side and left hand side with this k then it will be equal to v at an angle delta plus v at an angle 0 divided by k x by 2 plus v p at an angle delta by 2 divided by k x sigma. Okay. So, from this expression, from this expression I can find out this. So, this is what our expression is and as we know that uh, this expressions will have a, a real part and the imaginary part. So, if we equate, if we equate the imaginary part parts of both sides equation then what we will get? We will get this is V m sin delta by 2, this is equal to this V sin delta because this part imaginary part will be V cos delta plus J sin delta, V J sin delta. So, imaginary part would be V sin delta. The imaginary part of this would be 0 because it is only real quantity. So, this divided by K x by 2 plus V p sin delta by 2 that would be the imaginary part of this part divided by k x sigma. Okay. Now, the power flow expression, the power flow expression, expression with statcom placed at the midpoint of the line will be 
p is equal to or I should write p uh, compensated because it is compensated power which is flowing through the transmission line uh, due to the presence of the statcom. So, this will be equal to V V m divided by x by 2 sin delta y 2. Okay. Now, already we derived the expressions for uh, V m sin delta y 2. So, that means, this V m sin delta by 2 expression already we derived. If we replace it, then what we will get? We will get this will be equal to. So, we will be having 2 V by x outside multiplied by this that is V sin delta divided by k x by 2 plus V p sin delta by 2 divided by k x sigma. Okay. Now, if you multiply this then what we will get is this will be equal to. So, there will be 2 in the denominator. So, there will be 4 V square sin delta divided by k x square okay. and this portion would be uh, V V p sin delta by 2 divided by k x x sigma divided by 2. So, here these two I brought in the denominator. Okay. Now, we know that k is equal to this. So, if it is so, then k x. So, so this expression would be rather written as uh, v square sin delta divided by k x square divided by 4 and this expression will be v v p sin delta by 2 divided by k x x sigma divided by 2. Now, this k x square divided by 4 would be equal to if you put this k value from here this would be equal to 4 by x plus 1 by x sigma which is equal to k multiplied by x square multiplied by 4. So, which is equal to x plus x square divided by 4, sig 4 x sigma and this uh, k x x sigma divided by 2 is equal to. So, k again we put 4 by x plus 1 upon x sigma from here multiplied by x x sigma divided by 2 which is equal to 2 x sigma plus x by 2. Okay. So, this denominator we all further simplify with this. Okay. Now, if we put these two denominator there, so th therefore, the final expression the final mathematical expression for P comp is P comp equal to v square sin delta and the denominator already we, we derived that is x plus x square divided by 4 x sigma okay. plus this v v p sin delta by 2 divided by 2 x sigma plus x by 2. Okay. So, this is what the final expression for this compensated power. Now, we will analyze this expression. This expression shows that uh, there are two components. One is sin delta component, another is sin delta by 2 component. So, therefore, 
uh, if we put delta is equal to 0, so what would be the value of this P comp? So, P comp will be equal to also 0. However, if we put delta is equal to pi, then you can see this part would be 0, sin delta part would be 0, but this part would not be. So, then this P comp will be equal to V V P divided by 2 x sigma plus x by 2 sin pi by 2 which is equal to 1 sin pi by 2 which is equal to 1. So, that is not equal to 0. So, this is very unlike case that at delta is equal to pi that uh, power flow of the transmission line is not 0. So, that means power flow through the transmission line through the line is non zero at delta is equal to pi. Now, considering so, if we plot this p delta characteristics, so how would be the p delta characteristics? So, p delta characteristics if we plot then how it would be? So, you know that uh, without this stat com, this p delta characteristic is something like this. So, this is without stat com, this, uh, this power expression. Okay. So, this is p, this is delta this is you know p is delta is equal to 0, this is delta is equal to pi, this is delta is equal to pi by 2. Now, with statcom as I said this uh, uh, this power flow through this uh, transmission line would be non 0 or would be some positive value when delta is equal to pi. So, if, if we plot then uh, this p delta characteristics it would be something like this. Suppose, this is what the uh, expression for power flow when delta is equal to pi. So, then this power flow ex expression if we plot this, this will be the power flow expression with statcom. So, this simply shows that there is an enhancement of power flow or power transfer capacity. So, this characteristic shows so, this characteristic shows that there is enhancement of power transfer capacity with and if you consider that this corresponds to uh, these characteristics for a particular IC max, IC max or IC 1 max, then if you uh, that means this corresponds to the p delta characteristic correspond to a particular capacity of the statcom. If we increase the capacity of the statcom, these characteristics will be higher like this. So, this corresponds with statcom corresponds to a another capacity of this statcom which is higher than I C 1 max. Okay. Where I C 1 is as you know this uh, already I discussed this, this statcom uh, control characteristics it was something like this if we consider certain slope. So, this was suppose corresponds to I C 2 max, then this was corresponds to I C 1 max. So, this is what I statcom characteristics. So, when you increase this uh, you know rating of the statcom, then this p delta characteristics will be uplifted. Okay. So, that is what the 
thing you need to understand. So, STATCOM in general enhances the steady state power transfer capacity and also depending upon the size of the STATCOM, the uh, P delta characteristics would be uplifted okay, as I have shown here in the figure. So, we have completed up to this the steady state power transfer capacity. Now, next what we will discuss is the STATCOM in transient stability enhancement. Okay. So, STATCOM in transient stability enhancement of power systems. Okay. STATCOM in transient stability enhancement of power system. Now, uh, here I will discuss uh, the comparison of STATCOM's ability to enhance the power transfer cap uh, capacity enhancement and the transient stability uh, enhancement with uh, that of the SVC or static power compensator. So, let us plot the STATCOM uh, P delta characteristics and explain uh, its ability to enhance the transient stability enhancement and then I will compare it to the uh, SVC. Okay. So, to do so what we will do is let us plot this P delta characteristics once again. P delta characteristics once again. So, this is suppose the characteristic without this statcom. So, this is without statcom. Okay. So, this is you know delta is equal to 0, this is delta is equal to pi. Okay. Now, with statcom as I have told you or as we have found these characteristics will be uplifted and it will be something like this. Okay. It will be something like this. Okay. So, this is what the characteristics with STATCOM. So, this is the characteristics with STATCOM. Okay. Now, suppose this is the mechanical power P MEC. Okay. So, this was the operating point with the STATCOM. Okay. Now, suppose at this operating point there is a fault and this fault is cleared here at this particular point, okay, at this part correspond to this particular delta. Now, as you know, so this gives you the accelerating area, okay, where electrical power is 0, but mechanical power is constant. Now, if fault is cleared over here, so, again uh, at this instant this uh, electrical power is higher than the mechanical power. So, the machine will start deceleration and then uh, it will again go for increment here and at and we know that this uh, till uh, this accelerating power is equal to deceleration power uh, uh, until our equal area criteria is getting satisfied. So, machine will oscillate. And this is the area already I discussed, this is the area, this is the area which called the area margin, a margin or marginal area uh, with STATCOM. So, as compared to this without STATCOM case, this marginal area is much higher. Okay. So, now, if we have similar kind of P delta characteristics with SVC, with SVC and this is what our mechanical power, this is the P delta characteristics without SVC.
So, this is without SVC. Okay. Now, with SVC as we know for similar dating with statcom, the P delta characteristics will be something like this. The P delta characteristics would be something like this. It will operate up to this its capacity and then it will act as a fixed capacitor. Okay. So, this is the P delta characteristics with SVC. So, this is P delta characteristics with SVC. Now, if we have this is the operating point and this is where this fault occurs and this is same at the same uh, point uh, almost same area this fault is cleared. So, this is what the acceleration area similar to this statcom and this would be the deceleration area. So, that the deceleration area would be equal to the acceleration area this I discuss uh, many times okay. and the, the machine will oscillate up to this. So, here the marginal area would be somewhere this, this marginal area due to this, uh, this SPC would be something like this. So, this is now this A margin with SPC. Okay. Now, as we already we discussed, this is considering the placement of statcom and this is considering the placement of SVC. Now, if you compare them, then you can see look at this area, this A marginal area and this area. So, which area would be bigger? Of course, this uh, A margin of statcom. So, therefore, we can write, we can write, write A margin due to the statcom placement is higher than A margin due to the SPC placement for similar rating or we can write as a statement the marginal area of transient stability. area for transient stability with statcom is higher than similar rated or same rated SPC. That is what the main conclusion point I want to draw over here. So, if we have a similar rated or same uh, rated SPC and the statcom both will obviously enhance the marginal area of for tangent stability. However, the statcom will provide the much area or it will provide you know much uh, higher area for this marginal or available area to uh, keep the system stable. So, it will offer more available area to keep the system stable from the transients. Okay. So, that is what the main point I am trying to draw it. So, this is what uh, you, you can see pictorically from this particular figure. So, we complete up to this applications uh, of the uh, statcom up to these applications. So, only thing is left is this power system oscillation damping or how the statcom can be used in power system oscillation damping. So, let us do this right now. So, we will be doing this last uh, you know applications for statcom over here. Statcom in 
power system oscillation damping okay so let us draw this uh, schematic diagram once again so basic schematic diagram or basic control block diagram also so let us consider that this is the bus where we will place this statcom and this is what is our statcom okay now this is what our comparator here we have this measured value of this voltage to be fed that is vm it will act as a negative feedback then we will be having a reference v reference as we know already then will the the error voltage will be fed to the another control another comparator okay where we will feed also some auxiliary control input which is similar to k del delta del t and it is to be measured and fit from the particular bus where the statcom is placed this is what the bus where the statcom is placed then the next signal will be fed to the controller and then it will be it will generate a i reference and it will fit to the statcom so that statcom can uh, uh, and generate the appropriate signal to draw the uh, given value of reference given value of current from the system now here what would be the control action here the statcom actions statcom control action actions will be to modulate the bus voltage and so that it can increase the bus voltage voltage momentarily so that the power flow increases when this del del delta del t which is similar to the vari variation of the frequency which is similar to variation of the frequency is positive that means when the uh, you know uh, power system frequency is uh, going to be increased so del f is positive so what is to be done is to increase the flow of the power so that this uh, change can be arrested and that is that is possible by using statcom by modulating the bus voltage wherever it is to be placed that is an important role in fact this is an important role in power system stability and similarly it will decrease momentarily decrease the bus voltage momentarily so that the power flow decreases yes when del delta del t 
which is similar to del f is negative or frequency try to decline ok. So, that is how this is uh, statcom can be used in damping the oscillations of power systems. This is very important role of the statcom uh, in particular uh, the stability uh, due to the small signal or uh, stability due to the uh, uh, you know a very small frequency oscillations of power systems. Now, I will end this uh, particular lecture with a comparison of the uh, SVC and STATCOM. Okay. Comparison between STATCOM and SVC. Okay. So, first uh, let us draw a table. Here we will have SVC, here we will have STATCOM. Okay. Here different attributes. So, number one attribute is in terms of the uh, control characteristics, control characteristics. In terms of the control characteristics, if you look back this control characteristics of uh, stat SPC, it was something like this. Suppose this is V S P C, this is I S P C. So, it was like this, the control characteristics was like this. Okay. So, from this however, the STATCOM the control characteristics uh, if you compare that is V STATCOM and I STATCOM, it is something like this. Okay. Now, if you compare these two, so what we will can see that its output output is uh, system voltage dependent. Whereas, here output is system voltage independent. this is first come uh, you know active view twice then based upon speed it is faster it is slower primarily because the transportation lag uh, in case of SPC is at least 10 to uh, 20 times higher than the statcom so that is why uh, the statcom is much faster device and faster device would be more useful in uh, in dynamic performance as well okay then uh, uh, this their capability in transient stability so here uh, this statcom is higher marginal area which I already discussed. So, here is lower or lesser marginal area. Okay. And there is another issue that uh, this due to this uh, you know uh, this converter based topology of the statcom it can interface with the interface or I, I would say e seamless interface or easy interface 
with a real power sources. So, interface or real power exchange. Okay. So, this is what is the interface with the real power sources as compared to SVC. So, these are the different performance uh, indicators or different attribute wise uh, the difference between the SVC and STATCOM or uh, difference uh, between the behavioral uh, you know aspects of SVC and STATCOM. Okay. So, with this I will uh, uh, conclude my discussion on STATCOM and this will conclude the 11th module of this course. Thank you very much for your attention and I will look forward to see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.